Hello and welcome to uh, this video which will discuss UX design in digital marketing uh, and it's part of the web marketing degree in Bahrain Polytechnic and this video is narrated and produced by Anthony Frill. So uh, we're going to look at UX design today, we're going to look at some principles and basically what role it plays in digital marketing. Uh, creating a user-centric experience is the tagline that we've used, fancy tagline. So let's look at a few things. So uh, what is good user experience and, uh, versus bad user experience? And we look at that today. And some very good examples of bad user experience will in fact be my slide design. Uh, <laughs> uh, what is good user experience? We're going to look at some examples and we'll also look at some websites. We will uh, go through some maybe little um, assessments or class tasks that you will be using or doing, sorry, and uh, then we will obviously have a Q&A session about this later in the week. But uh, anybody else that's watching this video, um, you should get a good, uh, good understanding about what user experience is uh, with particular reference to digital marketing. <coughs> Most of uh, the people or my students listening to this will obviously have done some elements of user experience before in the class HCI and other uh, design classes that you've done in this web media degree. Um, but again, I suppose if we ask what is UX design or what is it all about for, for those that have never heard of it before, UX stands for user experience. Uh, and what what is it all about well i suppose from a user experience point of view it's about happy and satisfied users people that are using websites or social media but particularly websites and mobile applications that the user is having a, a happy and, and good experience um, of this uh, of this uh, platform that they're using and we've often discussed in in digital marketing and web marketing now the importance of the attention economy uh, trying to grab the, the attention of the user and indeed the negative effects of that or the opposite of that we know that the uh, the um, user now well the, the average user gives you very little time uh, they you know they'll come on your website and they might give you five or ten seconds of a quick browse and if, if you're not pressing all the right buttons or doing all the right things very quickly they're going to leave your website and move on to find something that's more uh, user-centered or a more pleasurable experience or satisfying experience so uh, <clears throat> let's look at some of the um, principles some of the sorry the terms that we would use in uh, user experience so and we can see here some terms you have user experience is the overall satisfaction a user gets from interacting with a website or digital tool or platform uh, so it's the overall satisfaction and that's user experience uh, in a general term the overall satisfaction a user gets from interacting with a website or a digital tool and that's obviously important for someone in marketing or digital marketing because um you know this is, are, are your customers going to stay on the website or or not is obviously an important factor uh, user experience and there's a little bit of uh, little space there so bad example of uh, design <laughs> user experience design maybe I put that in there on purpose to point out the, the user experience design I didn't it was just bad design uh, user experience design is about uh, <laughs> is about using proven design principles and content techniques to ensure the best user experience and um, we look at some of those design principles today but it's you know most websites they have a lot of the same design principles and techniques and that's because um, you know people like to look at the the same thing or not to look at something that's completely different and, and hard to to understand straight away and, and i suppose these design principles are based around an enjoyable or satisfactory experience from the website uh, and indeed keeping them uh, that attention economy that we're talking about keeping the user's attention so 
Uh, that's user experience design, user-centered design is about, about putting the, the customer's needs and wants and, and everything else above all else. Uh, the customer comes first in marketing. We often say the customer is always right. Um, well, the customer should come first in user-centered marketing and user-centered design. Uh, it would be the same uh, approach. So it involves research and testing on real users of the site and um i think some of the the i'm trying to think just off the top of my head some of the user-centered design techniques that that are used at the minute might be a b testing where you have two different um home pages or landing pages for for the same website for the same purpose and then comparing both of those websites to see which is the which is the preferred of the user um Okay, so usability is how slick a digital product is, uh, i.e. or e.g. No, i.e. how user friendly it is. Okay, and we're we're going to look at usability more uh, throughout the slides. So again, uh, just if you have any questions and you're taking notes here, or there's something you don't understand, write it down, and we'll address that in our next Q and A class. Or indeed, uh, email me at Anthony at poly polytechnic.bh. Uh, two types of online UX or two types of online user experience, and there are a lot more, but I've just picked these, which is uh, functional and creative, uh, and these are just two things that that you're online um, user experience can focus on uh, one the functional user experience is, is that everything is functional easy to use straightforward can complete tasks easily and everything works and that should be a given in a in a good website or good mobile application uh, but not always the case and I'm sure you've encountered many examples where this hasn't happened as well uh, <coughs> Creative user experience, I guess, is the that bit harder to define and, and usually comes in uh, in the design uh, processes. Not something that would always have been my strongest uh, strongest point when I was practicing heavily in digital marketing. Um, I just didn't have the skills that good designers had where they could create that wow factor and some people are very natural at it and some people are not and there's things that we can do to to um, uh, improve our creative user design. Again, some design principles if we stick to the, that help us with our, our design uh, to get that wow factor on a website. Um, and so the wow factors we said usually involves visual and creative elements uh, so the functional user experience is, is ensuring that everything is operational and works well and the creative user experience is you know harder to define to define that wow factor if you like and we will look at different principles uh, in these slides that help achieve both functional user experience and creative user experience so <clears throat> here you'll see six things that make good user experience uh, now what i would say is you will see many websites that have five six seven eight nine ten <laughs> eleven things that that make good user experience and we have here we have six things that make good user experience and then you'll see in, in the next couple of slides we have four design principles i have some links on websites um that have different numerical uh, um, uh, offerings, if you like, and uh, I suppose there's no hard and fast or fixed rules. You can see in the background image, we've got valuable, useful, accessible, desirable, credible. We'll look through these five or six things that make good user experience, and we'll look at some design principles. So the the six things that make good functional user experience and then perhaps four design principles and these are things that you would use or consider when uh, doing user experience for your website or mobile application again uh, we look at these 
web links towards the end um, because some of them make different recommendations. These six, you can use them as guidelines when you're doing your assessment. Uh, so refer to the assessment that we have on this and you can use these uh, six things that make good UX and, and the four design principles that are going to follow this. So uh, the uh, First of the six things that we talk about here is findability. Can I find it easily? Does it appear in search uh, engine result pages and uh, or in SEO? So um, findability, you know, that's obviously very important for, for a user experience. Um, a user doesn't want to have to go looking for your website too hard. Sometimes they might just type in two keywords into the search bar on Google. Sometimes they might know half of your name and, and then relate you to something else. But we we should uh, try and make our website or, or uh, whatever our digital platform is, is as findable as possible using the all the search engine optimizing uh, tools that we can. So it's important uh, for the user experience because it's the first user experience they have is, is finding it and if it's difficult to find uh, you're, you're obviously already as a user not overly satisfied and indeed uh, that attention economy could be dragged away to a competitor or someone else that has good findability so again thinking on what your keywords are, what would people search when they're looking for your website or product if you're an e-commerce website selling sports equipment, uh, how well do, does your website perform when you type in sports equipment to Google or Bing or Yahoo. Um, so these are things that we um, we as digital marketers need to focus on and indeed we can work or improve ourselves. You have all uh, practiced SEO, search engine optimization yourself, but uh, these are things that we do in the website that help optimize where we appear in search engines. So findability is one of the first things uh, that will make good user experience. Accessibility. Uh, again, this is probably one that you all understand, but uh, which contributes to good user experience. Does it work on my phone, tablet, desktop, and what are the loading speeds? And uh, of course, I think you all uh, um, know now from using these different platforms and devices that most websites, it's nearly inexcusable for a website not to be, um, not to be uh, responsive to a phone or a tablet so that it, uh, it changes shape. But I suppose you'd be surprised in, in some places form filling in that, that, that websites still aren't as, as uh, uh, responsive as they can be. But that is something that you know we should check straight away is is the uh, does this site is it from a user experience point of view is it good on mobile phones and, and is it good on tablets and i think from all of you using wordpress and different um tools to create website most of these now offer two or three views so you can see what it looks like on your mobile phone and what it looks like on your tablet and what it looks like in the laptop and i think that it uh, is important that we consider these things because uh, you know again if it's if it just doesn't look good in the phone you're you're going to lose the attention of your customer and uh, off they go to a competitor uh, <laughs> It's a bit apocalyptic, but there you go. And uh, what is the loading speed? If you have a slow loading website, again, uh, customers don't like it, users don't like it. So how can you improve your loading speed? Well, there's a couple of things there that you can do to improve your loading speed. Uh, you can Google it. <laughs> you can... <laughs> or <laughs> you can... Uh, some of the things that I'd recommend or I've recommended to clients in the past, they may have fast loading um, videos at the top of their their web page. You know, if you can move those videos or, or videos that um, that use up a lot of um, loading speed, uh, maybe you can move those videos further down the page and um, that they don't have to be there on the opening home page. Um, indeed, another thing that can contribute to speed is the, is the package that you've agreed with your hosting company. So you could look at the different hosting packages, maybe if you're hosting too many websites um, or, or indeed you, you've 
as a business, your business, ha your online business has increased dramatically. It's doing very well, and you never expected to have the the traffic that you have, and just that traffic now is too much for for the lower end package that you originally agreed with your host company. So these are just a couple of things that we would consider in accessibility uh, and um, fairly straightforward stuff that you would have uh, discussed before. But uh, so the third thing we talk about desirability, do I want to use it? Is it a pleasant experience? And this probably falls under the fact right here, by the way, just for a bad user experience, I've cluttered up this page SEO over here to findability, compatible to accessibility and desirability is going over to this nice page here. I think I just find it desirable because it's buns and I love buns or cake or whatever. Uh, do, I, do I want uh, to use it, is it a pleasant experience? And again, making the page desirable. Some people just have a have a great eye for this. I don't. It, it is definitely my Achilles heel in design and making stuff desirable. Uh, when um, I used to work with clients and designing, and I was designing stuff myself, I always would have had to get someone in the office to to look over the site and and. Uh, um, just get their opinion and more often than not they were like, that's terrible Anthony you need to change that and uh, so that's the third one desirability so the fourth thing there usability is it easy to use are tools used intuitive and easy to find and when we say is it easy to use uh, obviously you know i think a test of that yourself or getting someone else to test it before you go live is always a good way of testing it and um, they find it easy and intuitive and intuitive it as i guess is it just is it natural uh, to someone that's never used this is it natural for them to navigate through this website or through this mobile application so when we refer to usability is is this application or website easy to use and is it intuitive is, is it natural for them to uh, to navigate through and find their way through so you know yourself sometimes when you're using a new platform you're like oh, the sugar does this work and and uh, um, you spend ages and it's just not intuitive and indeed I often have to Google or YouTube how do you use this platform and then you watch the video and it gets very easy uh, whereas a website uh, uh, you know really should be intuitive it should be natural for for someone to just flow through the website and find things easily uh, so that's what we mean when we talk about usability <clears throat> credibility and we'll cover this again actually in the design principles but do I trust it is this website legitimate and I guess in the digital world where there is millions and millions of websites and um, legitimacy is uh, uh, something that of concern to users and something that we should be aware of and we should look at how do we how do we increase our credibility and obviously that's uh, easier for the the larger well-known brands but if you're a new brand or, or a startup you know how do you create trust with with users and, and things like that there and i suppose um we look through it in a bit but some of them are making sure that you have ssl or secure secure websites and especially if you're uh, taking payments and things like that there uh, the last thing that makes good UX is does it improve my world usefulness? Does it improve my world? Does it make my life easier? Do I get value from it? Will I get something in change in exchange for the time that I have spent on this site? Site, sorry. So, uh, is the website useful? Um, so there are pretty much six fairly straightforward. Uh, things that make good user experience it makes the uh, life easier for the customer uh, we've we're centering the design around our customer and we're trying to make life um, easier for them so again if you have any questions or notes please feel free to email me or we can discuss uh, in the next q a session which is on sunday uh, next page Okay, the last thing we'll do here won't take five or ten minutes. Look at four principles of user experience design, and um, <coughs> so again, four principles you might 
find a website or some book that says there are six or seven or eight and that's fine i have no problem with that whatsoever um these are just four that i recommend as good principles that i probably originally stole from someone else so uh, <laughs> um like the background i should say i think maybe comes from um, avengering.com or but anyway uh four principles of ux design and we'll go through these just in order. The first one is user-centered or user-centric design and content. So we should consider who our user is. And, uh, you know, that might seem obvious, but often in marketing, we don't consider our target market or indeed we consider our target market and everything but the website design or the platform design. So, um, it is important that we consider who our users are. If it's children, what's the design? Uh, adults, uh, silver surfers, a particular type of customer elegance, uh, value driven. Uh, you consider your, your customer and obviously uh, when you're designing the website, you're going to consider your customer. Uh, you're going to consider their needs, wants and demands. Again, asking the question, trying to put yourself into the customer's shoes and what are what do they need and what are they going to type in and where would they like to see things. So these are things that we should consider when we're designing uh, with user experience in mind. Why are they really coming to the website? Well, I suppose that depends on what the website is too. If it's an information-driven website or is it, if it's a, uh, an e-commerce website or a website that is designed to... Um, convert to customers and uh, then you know we we have to understand why are our customers coming to our website so um the this is something that we'd consider when we're designing what would make their life easier what would make their experience of the website better and easier and again always good to to get other people to test your website, uh, but even potential customers. Uh, when we're designing products in Lean Startup, we always we want to get our customers involved in the process as quickly as possible. And if you are developing a website, there is no, you know, it's, it's certainly worth getting a focus group of potential customers set up and, and asking them these questions. What would make their experience of this website better and easier? And uh, I suppose you do have to consider certain web skills or, or your customers' web skills um, depending on your target market again. Um, and while most of us are now uh, tech savvy, uh, you know, it's still something that we should consider. So that was uh, what the first principle. The second principle, and um, we've sort of talked about usability and convention usability before, but usability and conventions in terms of design, um, you know, conventions in the user experience. Users are used to certain things in every single website, uh, and it's important that we, you know don't go rogue don't decide to start introducing things that we think are cool but nobody else would have a clue what that that's a link to this or that uh, we try to stick to conventions and uh, you know it is nice obviously maybe that's why i don't have the wow factor uh, because i stick to conventions and maybe you have good examples of where conventions work and that is fine um but uh, we'll, look, we'll actually look at some conventions in a few different websites that I borrowed from. Oh, where did I get get the... Um, uh, I, think, I think the source is on it. But anyway, some here I've written down and some actually a little bit older. But links that are blue and underlined, well, they don't, it's not necessarily applicable to every website now. Oops, apologies. Uh, navigation menus at the top or left of the web page. Um, that would be standard, but again, I've probably seen some where they're now on the right hand side and indeed in uh, uh, maybe some of our Middle Eastern Bahraini friends can uh, that will be watching this video can answer the question uh, if we were doing a website would on, in um, the Middle East, would we have it on the right side of the page, uh, given that they like to read right to left. Logo in the top left-hand corner, linking back to homepage. Again, these are all luck. You can go through them and we'll discuss them more in the class. Um, but let's look at some examples of websites. And yes, that's the source of these designs, our web design or 
depot.com. Uh, you can see easy to spot logo with icon, good byline gives the navigation a unique feel, poor fashionable scroll bar, hmm, yeah, possibly uh, bad wasted screen space and good eye catching infographics. There's just some conventions. Uh, let's move on to next example. So we can uh, MSN here, good highly visible search box, poor choice for navigation, menu structure, I would agree, uh, too much is stuffed onto the page and that's often uh, uh, a fault of designers, I'm guilty of that myself in the past, good headings are more visible and oversized ad uh, to try and overcome the zombie factor. Okay. Here's a little barbecue war website, and again, source from web design, webdesignerdepot.com. Uh, good, simple navigation menu, highly visible logo, uh, bad mystery meat navigation. Yeah, I guess, I suppose we probably know what most of these things do, but the navigation is a little bit confusing, maybe. Uh, good was well designed user icon profiles, and that might even give the website credibility, which we will look at soon. So there's just some examples uh, of um, when we talk about user design principles uh, in terms of conventions. Uh, there's just some examples, and and. Again, I have a link on Moodle that you can have a look at. We'll go through the links at the end, uh, which takes you directly to the webdesignerdepot.com um, article on this. So simplicity, and you'll have seen actually in this last one, I, I like this, uh, I think the simplicity is good here, but simplicity in user experience design. Uh, simple is always best. Well, 99% uh, of the time it is, I guess. Uh, you may give me an example where it's not. Even if your product or service is complex, your website, your web portals, websites, platforms, apps should be simple and easy to use. Most customers want you to answer two questions. What is this? How does it work? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Is that true or not? But <laughs> most customers want you to answer two questions. What is this and how does it work? Let's say it's true. But, uh, <laughs> simplicity includes lots of white space gives your customers breathing room online and we've seen that actually in the in the barbecue demonstration that we see that we looked at a few slides back be careful of fonts dark fonts on a light background are best plain language clear simple language makes better user experience stick to known web conventions we've already talked about and don't confuse users with too many options uh, they will suffer analysis paralysis and delay decisions and these are probably principles that I would have st stuck to uh, when I was designing websites and um, digital marketing campaigns uh, again because I was a bad designer and then lastly uh, the fourth principle that we're going to look at today which is credibility and um, Credibility, how does the website look? Is it professional and beautiful? Prominent use of phone numbers and addresses. Users want to know there are real people behind the website and they can be reached easily. And I think that's true. Um, again, for that, I suppose there's an element of trustworthiness or lack of trustworthiness still about the internet and, and uh, e-commerce platforms and this is psychological in the main part but we all know even say five years ago we were probably reluctant to buy stuff on mobile phones whereas now um that reluctance is um you know it's not there anymore and i guess even nine or ten years ago we were reluctant to buy stuff on websites and now obviously that reluctancy has gone so um but there are certain things that we can do to in design principles that make our website uh, more credible and uh, you know those are that uh, sometimes that the real people behind the website you'd often see that in health websites and dentistry websites where you have a profile of, of the of the dentists and the the, the different people are indeed in, in a lot of businesses uh, about us that personal information gives gives the user a little bit more 
I guess um, uh, confidence that that there's real people behind, and you know even the story about your business it gives the it gives the user that um, that sort of feel uh, of credibility and trustworthiness. Um, I suppose one thing that I would often or would often um, would often put me off uh, websites is spelling mistakes or, or grammatical errors and I don't know if that's just me or if that's uh, a lot of people I don't like it if I see um, mistakes being made and use you know with spelling I tend to think that this is an amateur setup and would certainly quest question um, you know the legitimacy of the website so from a marketing experience and obviously content creation uh, that is important that obviously everything is well written and no spelling mistakes no grammatical or syntax error and uh, I think in the assess assessment that you will be doing you may have to create some content for uh, a social media campaign and I would say the same thing to you that um, uh, you know that that we don't uh, make spelling mistakes and I think I've probably mentioned that in these slides uh, other things genuine testimonials and um, testimonials are good and, and that they're genuine um, and we often see that even in uh, you know we see it a lot in different websites like booking.com or different things when we go looking for recommendations you know those testimonials do I guess add a little bit of credibility and trustworthiness to and help us make our decisions uh, if you if you've ever received any awards um, that's good good PR to always uh, show your awards off uh, as you can uh, links to credible external third-party endorsements up-to-date fresh and relevant content it is bad to have uh, Irrelevant or content that is that is old, um, not used, etc. So, I think that's pretty much um, the four principles that we've looked at. So we've sort of looked at the credibility. We've looked at simplicity, uh, usability, and user-centered design. And um, they're sort of the four principles of user experience design that we've focused on today. Uh, also. The six things that make up good UX. Uh, we talked about uh, desirability. We talked about accessibility, and mm, what was the other ones? I think we had findability, uh, which was, of course, uh, how easy it is to find. Accessibility does it work on your mobile devices? Desirability, making it look good. Uh, usability, uh, is it easy to use? Credibility, do I trust? And we've just gone through credibility and design, and then usefulness. So. Um, that is pretty much all I want to go through with these slides. What I would say is just before we uh, leave it there, oh, you can see how wonderful I've designed these. Um, but I would like you to have a look at the Moodle page. I will put the uh, the video here. It's not up yet because I haven't saved it. So just for your own uh, knowledge, I'll put the video up here. But I would like you to look at these uh, five websites that um, also discuss probably much better than I have um, uh, the, the um, different things that we've discussed today. So uh, let's look at so let's look at the first website why user experience is key to digital marketing success have it up here again this is the uh, digital marketing institute and they write a very good article on that there um so if you could have a read of this and we'll discuss it again user experience in a mobile world you user experience this is actually very good there's five things they refer to down here which was you know uh, the seo user experience content strategy um very much worth a read there so I highly recommend having a look at that uh, I think the next article then is uh, UX design matters to digital marketing let's have a look at that and it goes through things like speed which we talked about today usability mobile experience uh, and then just again a little bit more detail there is the background image that I used in the terribly designed slides but it, it is okay I know you'll forgive me 
uh, and it goes through seven factors that influence user experience. So you've got all these numbers, four design principles, five factors, seven factors, uh, but they're all pretty much the same thing, just written in a different way with different examples. Uh, what's more important is that you understand user experience and the majority of these things. Um, web Design Depot, this is good. Uh, I like this actually, saturation in web design and, and you can make the argument that uh, websites uh, designs are being saturated. But anyway, that goes through uh, uh, a lot of nice examples um, that we used some of them as, as in our slides. And then the last thing that we website that I recommend here, the Nielsen Norman Group, which uh, talks about trustworthiness in website design and four credibility factors they've gone for. Design quality, uh, upfront disclosure, comprehensive correct and current, and I think the last one connected to the rest of the web. Okay, so uh, what we'll do, we'll leave it there for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I hope it gave you a good understanding of user experience uh, referred specifically to digital marketing. Do feel free to email me any questions. We will have a Q&A session on this uh, in your next class so I uh, take down any questions or anything that you have and uh, any comments feel free to leave them under here on how I can improve uh, <laughs> my video designs and I'm something I'm going to try and do. Okay, hope you have a nice day and talk soon. Cheers.